So in this video, I'm going to be making myself a miter sled. And this miter sled can actually be used to cut splines as well, due to the 45 degree angle that I've cut on the top of the fence. I've also cut a triangle out of the back of the fence so that you can actually clamp your workpiece at the 45 degree angle. It's got two stop blocks using some toilet flange bolts and a T-track that I cut out. So if you think you can use it, you're interested in watching the video, stick around. I switched out my blade for my uh, finger joint set and I set it for the max which for me is 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to make two passes and that is to fit the um, the base of a toilet, fan, toilet flange bolt. Now you should be able to see the groove that I just made and that was glued to the inside and that's where that uh, bolt's going to ride back and forth on. And now I'm just going to square up the ends. switch this out again for the quarter inch um, finger joint set and then I'm gonna cut the final groove all the way through if you couldn't tell dropping things down there is rather common for me Worked out about as well as I was hoping. So I'm going to be cutting triangular block out of the back of this so that I'll be able to clamp the piece to the fence. So that's the intended purpose for this back cut, this triangular piece that I cut out. It's so that it's parallel with the 45 degree face. And so I've got the runners cut and they're, they're undersized. So they will fit below the surface of the table saw and they're rather wobbly. So they don't fit in here perfectly, which is what I want. Because I don't want you know, summer to roll around and these, gets, and these swell and then I, I can't run this through the, the table saw. So I like to cut them undersized. And then I just got some, some nuts I drop in there. So when I put it down, it's above the table saw. Still floppy, but I've got an index card and a razor blade. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wedge both of these runners to the inside using the index cards so that they'll stay straight as it goes through after it's glued on. And that way, if it does expand and contract a little bit because these are wood, it shouldn't bind. Okay. 
And you gotta make sure you remember to force them both in. Or you can force them, force them both out, but not both one way because then it would flop around afterwards. This doesn't really need to be perfectly aligned with the front of the saw, but it just makes it all easier to set up. So you'll notice that the, the runners are shorter, and it's for two reasons. One is I didn't want to waste the material, and two is I didn't want to have to cut into my, uh, my workbench any more than I had to. So I measured it enough to know that I could get the runners on, it was stable if I could get the blade up. So it would work enough. I am going to have to cut into my bench a little bit, probably about an inch and a half for the runner on this side, because the blade will max out about here right now. So, so now I'm going to put the back support on first. And that's just to keep it flat and to keep it together for when I make my first pass through to get the center line in. Once the center line's in, then I can use that to make the back fence square to the, to the cut line. I'm putting counter sinks on both sides of the board so that when I screw it together, any little bits that might pull out of the holes or pull out of the, the plywood won't get in the way. I'll pull it nice and tight because this is what's going to make this flat. Okay, cut almost all the way through, leaving just a little bit. Make sure this side doesn't wobble around. Angle side goes in.
Now, I made a, a stop lock for this, and it's just a, box, a block, and I put in two screws where the heads are a quarter inch, and then this is my, uh, my toilet flange bolt. And this is a knob that I made using plans from Earl's video. Uh, you can, I'll put the link down below so you can watch Earl's video. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but he's got a lot of good stuff on his channel, so you might want to take a look and subscribe. All right, so I have two stop blocks now, and I cut myself an eighth inch spacer, which is the same width as my table saw blade. So I set up the stop blocks so that there is a space of the eighth inch between them. I'm going to push them up against the far stop first, make a pass, push it up against the inside stop, make a second pass, and that'll make my quarter inch spacing for my splines.